good evening. Uh, I represent a company called Scheffler, and uh, we are uh, having three different uh, legal entities. And uh, interestingly, as uh, Kavita was talking about, we have a diverse range of products and services. And uh, that's where the challenge of opportunity comes in the future. So we do sell bearings, which is pretty much our commodity. At the same time, we actually also are associated with developing some very high-end products which goes to every automobile company which operates out of India. So when we look at uh, the kind of culture which we want to create, or the kind of driver we want to create for our employees, it varies from one, one side to operational excellence to one side is purely focused on innovations and really thinking out of the box. So that's what makes the uh, job of uh, the managers very interesting in our organizations uh, because they need to really keep always ahead about how to keep our employees motivated and also take into consideration, this is one of the important points of performance management system, that how do we continue to discuss with our employees, how do we continue to have a qualitative discussion with these uh, guys so that uh, we can address their needs well in advance because we truly believe that if our employees are really well motivated, then we can really be actually be able to address the customer's needs and also value creation for the society. So that's what uh, makes our job quite interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shantanu. So I think uh, what I want to register at this stage is that there are four different contexts. I think uh, Vimal's context is that it's not your imagination of value, but somewhere there is a, a supply chain or a value chain in the industry where one person consumes one person's output and then produces another output consumed by somebody else. Therefore, the concept of capturing value and measuring value becomes very central to him. I think uh, Manjula really talked about uh, a fabulous experience for the customer and everything else centered around it. I think that's the second. And Kavita really talked about uh, a very ambitious scale and achieving that ambitious scale by becoming a consulting partner to their customers. I think that's the thing. And Shantanu talked about very interesting problem. He has two different businesses with two different challenges. How do I address it with a single you know, kind of uh, solution is something that he is trying to look at. Now, having understood the four different kinds of contexts that they are each in, and I, I would just like to throw up on this question. Anybody can answer first uh, in terms of what are you seeking to do in the performance management system to be able to add value to the business? What are you seeking to do? What are you trying to do? What have you already done? What are you trying to do? Any, any one of you can start and say, how is your performance management system and its principles and its emphasis speaking to this business problem? system it's up on um, various uh, sites and uh, when I said speed and innovation in what is it that we are trying to solve um, we realized that the existing bell curve system that has held us in pretty good stead uh, in the past decade uh, may not be the right approach going forward um, so there were two changes to the appraisal system um, uh, within the organization uh, and it's pretty similar to what others have done. We've not um, done away with the bell curve, so to speak, but we realize that the bell curve did have its disadvantages in today's economy, uh, in today's culture that we are trying to uh, build and uh, the, uh, the stage in our evolution. When we looked at all of these three components, we realized that uh, the bell curve of force-fitting people into certain uh, you know, percentages may not be the right approach because we actually started having a lot of attrition based only on the fact that I am a certain uh, rating at the end of the year, my manager comes and tells me, Mere liye to aap to star ho, but what to do, HR has this policy and that's the reason I put you down. Uh, those are the kind of um, you know, uh, exit interview comments that we uh, received. And most importantly, we found that collaboration and teamwork in this particular, uh, you know, in this particular um, approach was not really being 
built, just to give you an example, when new employees come in and you give a buddy and you say, why don't you buddy with this employee going forward for the next two or three months? We found that uh, this employee would not give information freely to everybody. He would say, uh, you need to know this, 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 and this you'll figure out. Because he himself has figured out, you know, after a lot of pain. So there is this competitive spirit, and it is good to have competitive uh, spirit, but not at the cost of collaboration. And collaboration actually leads to innovation. And we realize that if innovation is one of the issues that we are trying to uh, instill in employees, this particular approach or model may not be the right one. So while we have maintained the top, uh, you know, the top raters have to be a certain percentage, we also kept a range. You know, earlier, uh, the GE model was so well copied by all of us that we said, if you are the best, it has to be only 20%. 22 million was 21 to forget. It has to be only 22%. But, you know, we've kind of given a, a range and we've said, this is the percentage that you can play around uh, with. You need to have your justification. However, it's not, impo it's not uh, you're not pushed to the wall as a manager to force fit a person to a lower um, rating. Because usually as a manager, what would you do? You don't want to be bad. And as Indians, it's, it's a culture that we don't want to call the person and say, you've, you know, you're uh, going to be put on a performance improvement uh, plan, what we call as a PIP. So that was the first change that we did. And the second change was a lot of manager, um, what should I say, development programs that were introduced because in the previous, uh, in the previous regime or the previous model, what happens? As a manager, uh, I know that my rating will depend on how I perform. Uh, so if I have to perform very well, I will delegate work to the best of my performers. I will not even go to people who are, you know, average and I will have to lead them and I will have to counsel them and coach them. I'll say, why should I go with the sub Why should I get into? I will just get into uh, a meeting, call my best performers, tell them that this has to be done immediately. This, because it's, it, the culture that we have now is a now culture. Even your clients are pushing you and saying you want creative solutions and concepts at, uh, you know, the click of a button. So you have uh, this meeting and then you tell them uh, speed is the key if we have to win against you know, a plethora of other people in competition who have uh, you know, raised uh, the bid. And uh, you are not training team members who are average. So what happens? In the organization, you have people who you have picked up based on their scores, based on a test. They all enter the organization. You don't share because you are worried about your own rating and the incentive payout and the various linkages that the rating um, you know, is applied to. So we've changed it and we said uh, we will have to focus because manager's role today is extremely critical. We've changed that and we said we will train you how to uh, coach people better. Just like as a parent, you coach your uh, employees and you, uh, you coach your, what am I saying, your children. See, even children also I call it police. Uh, you coach your uh, uh, children. You don't wait till the end of the year saying, you know, last year in this birthday party, you know, you did not behave well. You don't do that. You coach him on a regular basis. So that is what we are trying to change and culturally it is very difficult given the scale. Because all along emplo employer, uh, managers would say, in, on this day he did very badly, on this day he did badly, on this day he spoke very well to the client. So you kind of keep a repository and at the end of the year you share it with uh, you know, your uh, team members. But that is what we said, if you are changing the system, it is not important to justify to the employee saying you've done badly uh, and this is the reason for it. Uh, rather turn around and have continuous, uh, continuous conversations with the employees as coaches. So these are two changes that we've brought about. Excellent. Yeah. So creative uh, solutions cannot happen under the sword and where employees feel on trial every day. So there is an attempt to loosen it up and make sure that there is a conversation, collaboration, purpose, meaning engagement around those things rather than who did well and part of whom. I think that's the that's, that's the way the system has been changed to meet the business reality. Any, any other? Yeah. Uh, our industry is more dynamic because um, it's a startup, it's an upcoming industry, the challenges are wide. Um, so our goals are not long-term goals. We, we, we believe in building short-term goals. This has been decided within the meetings at the senior management level. Then these goals are further being you know, divided in you know, different departments. So the, the respective uh, head of the departments you know, then takes the ownership of his own goal. And 
Our processes are very interconnected. In each of our processes, each of our department work is very interconnected. So everybody have to run with the same speed. There cannot be a bottleneck in any of these processes. So the sync to be maintained between the functions is very important. So that's the second challenge that we have. So the goals have been divided. Each of these managers will further ensure that their team members are being properly briefed, coached. As these goals are being assessed, you know, whatever the goals are being given, there's a review meeting happening on a weekly basis, a fortnightly basis, trying to understand how well they have performed, what are the gaps, okay, what are the challenges they are facing. So the managers will have to have time to understand their problems, you know, help them, you know, in achieving, you know, their results by motivating them, by coaching them. By being, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, as you know, said, she said, by being a parent to that, you know, employee, so that he feels good about, you know, when he achieves that goal. So, in, in specifically at our kind of industry, we have to be there, available for our people, so that they meet up with their goals within the time frame, and um, they are able to achieve it. And we cannot, you know, wait for the year end to appraise them. You know, we, we cannot do that because the resources are very limited and we have to ensure that we retain our resources thoroughly well because they are very important and valuable for us. So training and coaching them is an important aspect that we create in them. We also build a sense of ownership within them about the work that they do. So they are being involved in most of the decision making, they are being involved in most of the you know, goals that they set. So when at times we may not have to tell them that you have to do this job, they know when a, a KRA or a KPI has been given to them, they have to achieve it within the stipulated time. And that's the kind of culture we are being able to create and I think much more to come in in the coming years. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Manjula. I think they are really well articulated as to how the two are connected. So it's speed, therefore short-term goals, not long-term goals. And and I, I heard us say just before our, we we came here that they want to have a very tight control on the the end customer experience. Therefore, they tend not to outsource. So they put a lot of departments inside. Therefore, the speed with which a change is cascaded is very well enabled. And performance management is at the service of the employee. So performance management question is, what can I do for you rather than what did you do today against what you have said. So creating enablers, removing disablers, that's been the real focus of the, that's, that's what the attempt is. Yes. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the time now is the fundamentals of this entire process is being questioned. Where is it heading? Probably the answers will come because it has started being questioned right now. I don't think anybody has a clear answer. We all are talking about the bell curves getting completely washed away. Some are continuing. But all I can relate is, uh, you know, the businesses, the organizations, what used to be the capital today has completely changed. The, the businesses which requires to be, you know, valued were based on the capital of uh, the organizations today. It's the data that has become the biggest capital. Uber is, you know, in terms of valuation is as equal as Ford. Where is it coming from? And that's where the fundamental questions are changing and what I foresee, I'll talk about that uh, in terms of the way, uh, a big thanks to the e-commerce industry, the way they are talking about and it's happening in B2B industry as well. Uh, and I'm quoting uh, some of the examples here which I recently got through with Ram Charan, we had a strategy meeting with him uh, for us uh, with Sterlite. The way every customer is being dealt uniquely, similar is going to come as far as the employees are concerned. There is no going to be the law of averages. Our policies, our processes, our systems have to be exclusively dealt with the individuals and thanks and thanks to the algorithms, the speeds of the systems which are enabling this to happen, times are not going to be far away that what is happening in uh, uh, the e-commerce or retail is, is also going to come shortly uh, even in a B2B space. 
so what i am forcing uh, here is uh, the fundamental questions of uh, the way the employees are being reviewed whether it's the time frame yes the world is very dynamic every every month every quarter is getting so changed the the vision which used to be about 10 years has now validity of 3 years you don't know what is going to happen so much of destruction is happening across uh, you know the industry something which was very valid 5 years back today is no though no reason for that existence of that business or that industry itself that is the level of destruction that we need to be ready and it is going to come which i am forcing even in the way we do employees performance management excellent i think so i think it's a very big realization for a very capital intensive company to realize that the source of value is the data you hold the insights you hold and therefore trying to individualize the strategy for not only customers but for employees i think you know vimal if you can towards the end try and imagine what would that mean for the performance management system how would two employees in the same function have what potentially could be imagine i know it's not very easy to visualize it but if you if i can request you to make an attempt towards the end of this session sure sure santanu well i'll take a little different route uh you know i think uh, the area where uh, i would just like to focus on is that uh, when the uh, tradition the performance management system was probably introduced or in the past one of the purpose was uh, to improve the organizational capability and uh, one of the important ingredients to that is through individual growth so the the, the spirit was uh, something like you know you grow your companies you grow your employees and uh, they in turn will grow actually your organizations and in the process i think probably you keep on raising the bar and uh, what i i see today is that this is one area where there is a huge dilution so the overall focus is only towards the performance goals and probably not that much of focus i would not say it's entirely gone but it's not that much of focus on maybe a qualitative discussions or kind of career counseling or similar kind of stuff you know i think one good thing which i would uh, say that in uh, this company where i work is different than uh, many other companies earlier i worked and i am aware of uh, they have uh, and i have been actually following that for last 5 6 years it's a global template where uh, they uh, they differentiate the whole process into two different uh, discussions one is called employee development dialogue which is entirely different i mean it's it's probably done 5 uh, 6 months before the performance dialogue which is normally happens at the beginning of the year and this edd the dialogue has hardly any touch point on the performance because it normally happens in july august time frame you really cannot have any uh, you know huge uh, discussion on this topic maybe you have some inkling that what's coming <coughs> but the other overall focus is entirely on in terms of what's your interest what company can do for you what areas as a manager you see actually you should work on so uh, i would say that it's a excellent excellent template and uh, what emulating but uh, at the same time it depends on uh, what kind of qualitative discussions the manager is going to have with the employees and from my experience i can only share with you is that maybe 20 to 25% 25% is still also a high number 20% employees they take personal interest in these discussions and <coughs> essentially i have seen that if i look at uh, the populations most of them most of them are on high pods so it, it clearly shows that you know who takes interest in their own career and who just takes it as a part of their regular mundane exercise so uh, in a way what happens is that the organization also put some onus on the employee saying that by the way it's your career so if you really want to take interest then you have to really take it seriously and have some discussions with your manager rather push your managers to have this discussions uh, and if you think that okay it's okay to focus on only the target agreement discussions you have a choice so essentially what i'm saying is that yes of course 
data analytics will actually play an important role, but if you look at uh, the uh, generations which are coming up, uh, they also shows these templates where they really need some right feedback. They also need to have some discussions about the purpose of what kind of jobs they are doing and also certain uh, very important uh, uh, parameters of uh, you know, the discussions, which is not typically with related to the business performance, in which anyway is not going to dilute the importance of the business performance because you are actually trying to drive the fundamentals of the organizations more forward looking. So that's one uh, perspective I think we should not forget. That's from myself. Thank you. Excellent uh, departure, Shantanu. I think uh, uh, after all, what is the use of the performance management discussion? If it is only for about assessment and business performance, shouldn't, shouldn't it have some meaning for the individual? And is that not diluted, the coaching, the development? That leads me to an interesting question. So in all our appraisal forms, you will have multiple sections. There will be a section about goals and results. There will be a section about competencies, capabilities, behaviors, or the hows of doing that. And there may be a section or may not be a section about effort. There may be a section about how critical the individual is to the team. You may capture that. Though strictly, you can call it talent management rather than performance management. You may have these multiple sections. So I just want a factual answer from all of you. So in your respective companies and contexts, so for the final rating, you know, on which lots of goodies are dependent on, which section has higher weightage or sole weightage uh, in the final decision? So what, what in the way it's practiced in your organization? So when you say, uh, you know, performance to be measured, uh, and I'm bringing uh, the subject to an more than that, uh, the world is moving more and more towards pay for performance. You know, right. The pay for performance is going to go up and therefore what to measure uh, and how to measure both becomes important. So before even going to how to measure, I think what to measure. Uh, so there are two aspects to it. One is the, you know, how as an organization we have performed, a big portion of that uh, drives because ultimately it's an organization goal. Unless you are, you know, making a goal in a basketball game, what the fun of you know individuals making centuries in a cricket game? Right. So that's an individual win. I don't think that's uh, uh, any organization is uh, in today's world uh, promoting. So that's that's the organization and the team goals, giving them as a uh, very good uh, quantitative weightage in right. terms of uh, putting. So that's the what part. And second part, when you said the individuals performance. So when you say individuals performance. Uh, it has uh, different aspects. Uh, fundamentally, it has uh, you know the discipline things, uh, the the fundamental intelligence, how you deal and work with people. Uh, those are the softer parts. Uh, the second part, of course, is what's the hard line in terms of the numbers? Uh, where is it coming from? Uh, the goals that you are expected to achieve, and that brings to a concept of uh, that. Uh, the frequency, is it annual, is it uh, monthly, you know, it, it varies from industry to industry and probably the companies are trying because the world is very dynamic, which I, you know, in the beginning was pointing out. So it depends on organizations. The lead time today is going to keep on getting reduced. What has the most important weightage? I think, yes, everyone wants, finally, it's the numbers. Understood. But there is a decent weightage that organizations provide on uh, you know how the individual when it's the managers and uh, the leaders how are they creating uh, you know the culture in the organization how are they finding uh, you know they are creating leaders below them as a manager am i playing a role as a manager and i'm still an individual contributor even if i would have achieved a goal and i have not created uh, you know the succession uh, under me and there is no coherence, he is not a manager, I will rather, rather put him in an individual contributor role. So definitely those aspects become very important and critical as well. Thank you. So results, primary weightage and if you are you know, in the business of making other people productive, then what you do in terms of your values and behaviors have an important weightage, I think that is a fair answer. Anjula? Uh, most of the points I will agree with Simul is that you know, uh, one is to, you know, we have to divide it into a team uh, achievement or you know, a team KPI and an innovation. So when we want to assess the team as such, you know, uh, definitely what kind of contribution is coming from the team 
and what is the individual contribution if an individual perform and that's that's how they put together will you know give uh, you know will be able, will enable the team to achieve that particular goal within the time uh, it's being within the time frame so uh, both need to be assessed in a different manner because ultimately it's what the employee satisfaction will come now coming to the other point of you know bidding more leaders within your department or within your own domain is very important you know i completely agree with vimal on that because that's how it's going to uh, bring in a sense of ownership in each and every employee monetary is one part sure. but in terms of the job satisfaction mm-hmm. in terms of what i have done you know what i have achieved you know if he has that sense of ownership within him for example a small example or delivery boy if he knows customer experience is an important aspect for our business it's a sunny day with 42 degree temperature but then that for him ensuring that delivery is being done within that particular time so how we inculcate that kind of ownership in a delivery boy wherein he ensures this has to be delivered before 1 o'clock and he does it and i think that talks about it in terms of the other part is concerned you know what we are going to remunerate him how we are going to pay that's a secondary part that each and every organization de- decides and uh, you know um, you know how they have to go about it